Hi, I'm Angela Piper. I'm a functional medicine nutritionist, and today I'm going to talk about SIBO and autoimmunity. Gut motility issues are center stage when addressing SIBO. Food and digestive contents must be kept moving forward through the digestive tract at a reasonable speed both during meals and in between meals. This needs to happen to both prevent SIBO from occurring in the first place and to prevent SIBO from coming back after treatment. So what if these waves of motion were inhibited by an autoimmune condition? On quite a few occasions during an intake conversation with my patients, they shared that their digestion simply began to stall and they don't know why it happened. For the first 30 years of their life, everything went great and all of a sudden one day it went sideways. So I asked them, did you have food poisoning about three months prior to this happening? And more often than not, this is the case. So what happened? Beginning in the esophagus, food is moved down the tract by a process called peristalsis. This rhythmic wave of smooth muscle contractions help food continue to move forward through the digestive tract. And picture the movement of an earthworm for a moment and you'll start to understand how these peristaltic waves move down the smooth muscle of your digestive tract all the way from your esophagus down through the small intestine. In between meals, during a fasting state, the digestive tract is swept by cleansing waves signaled by the migrating motor complex. One of its functions is to transport organisms from the small intestine to the large intestine. This includes bacteria and organisms, so you can see how important the sweeping motion is to the prevention and the treatment of SIBO. It's regulated by gut hormones and nerve signaling from the central nervous system. When the migrating motor complex kicks in, there's an increase in gastric, biliary, and pancreatic secretions, or stomach secretions, bile, and digestive enzymes. This helps digest leftover matter in the small intestine and moves it into the large intestine. So where does the autoimmune piece fit in? Peristaltic waves are waves of contraction and release. They rely on nerve signaling of the smooth muscle that lines the digestive tract. The smooth muscle is relaxed in its normal state. The nerve signals trigger the contraction of the smooth muscle, and then these coordinated wave-like contractions move the matter down the digestive tract. It's the ability to contract your smooth muscle that is of interest here. If the body produces antibodies that disrupt the nerve pathways that end innervation of nerves into the smooth muscle of your digestive tract, your peristaltic waves will be inhibited. The smooth muscle cannot contract. This is one way that gut motility is inhibited. So how does this happen? It happens when the body is exposed to a toxin. The body then produces antibodies to the toxin, and these antibodies not only attack the toxin, they also attack a protein in your gut called vinculin. This is through a process called molecular mimicry. The protein sequences in vinculin resembles the toxin closely enough that the antibody thinks vinculin is a foreign invader and begins to attack it. This is an autoimmune condition where your immune system has produced an antibody that is attacking self. So where does this toxin come from? The short answer is food poisoning event. So E. coli, salmonella, shigella, or campylobacter all produce a common toxin called the CDTB toxin and it stands for cytolethal distending toxin B. Once exposed to the CDTB toxin, some people, not all, will produce antibodies to the toxin. And these antibodies will also attack vinculin, creating an autoimmune condition. Vinculin is a protein that connects a network of cells within the pacemaker of the gut, and this is called the interstitial cells of Cajal. The pacemaker of the gut does exactly what you think it would. It's signaling network that signals the coordinated wave-like contractions of peristalsis. It sets the pace. Vinculin helps these cells connect and communicate electrical signals to contract your smooth muscle. If vinculin is damaged or destroyed, it can't link the cells within the pacemaker and you then can't transmit the electrical signals to contract your smooth muscle. This stalls gastric motility during meals and in between meals. And we think that about 20% of people exposed to this toxin will go on to develop SIBO. So this is really important to the SIBO population that is dealing with constipation. Uh, what those people will get is ongoing IBS symptoms. And then this takes about three months to develop. So here's what it looks like. There's a food poisoning event and exposure to the CDTB toxin, which triggers gastritis. 
20% of people will create an antibody to the toxin. They'll recover from the food poisoning event. Gut symptoms will return to normal. The antibodies created to address the toxin start to attack vinculin. And over time, your gut motility slows, leading to a higher fermentable environment in the small intestine and setting the stage for SIBO and IBS symptoms that appear around the three month mark. Since the gut symptoms seem to recover after the food poisoning event, and then begin to rear their head around the three month mark, many people don't equate gut symptoms with the food poisoning event. So how do you treat this? Currently, a SIBO eating plan, that's a low fermentable eating plan, supplemental and prescription prokinetics, which are pro-motility in the gut, stress management, addressing meal timing, and addressing SIBO with herbal therapy. So SIBO organisms get knocked down and they don't make things worse, worse uh, by further constipating you. These are the best ways to treat this. The CDTB toxin and vinculin connection are a new discovery from Dr. Mark Pimental's group. These will lead to new medications that will help people treat this form of gut paresis, but we're not quite there yet, but it'll be really life-changing for some when we figure that piece out. Dr. Mark Pimental and his team are currently developing a blood test that will test for the presence of this anti-antibody to vinculin. Now this will be the first IBS test that will allow us to quickly identify an IBS diagnosis because it differentiates between IBS and an inflammatory bowel disease, so it's, it's exciting. If we can identify this toxin as a contributing factor for you acquiring SIBO, this, this information will help with the formulation of both the short and long-term treatment planning to address SIBO. Gut motility will not easily be reinstated. Long-term prokinetics, that pro-gut motility medications or supplements, will need to be utilized to try to make up for this loss of gut motility. The next step is to find a medication that can target these antibodies to reduce the damage that is done to vinculin. If you want to learn more about me, check out my site at SIBOGuru.com. I look forward to meeting you.